Hey, you know how the devil is in the details? Well, it's true. You can craft the most brilliant messaging, the most clever reel, the best event ever. But if you're missing a key detail, or even several smaller details, then the work becomes less effective, and you're left frustrated and annoyed. So today, let's talk about some of the details you need to consider when creating your communications. Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode of Connections, Coffee, and Confidence. My name is Janice Fogarty, and I'm a communications strategist. This podcast is where I get to talk about all things strategic communications, including content creation and messaging. So whether you create content for your business or as your business, I know you're going to find something in each episode that contributes to your success. Thank you so much for being here today. And now, here's today's episode. Now, a wee caveat before heading into this topic, because I never want to come on this podcast, or go anywhere else for that matter, and tell people what they must do, or tell them what they do isn't worthwhile if you don't do it this particular way. There is a theory for every skill, for every piece of knowledge, a backbone that supports the weight of the idea, object, or action. And I believe that there's space for people to use that theory, to put it into practice with their own style, to fit their own comfort or skill level, and still get the job done. So in this podcast, as with most of them, I'm not going to tell you the specific ways you must address the issues I raise. I'll give you some suggestions, but it's up to you to decide how you do that in your own wonderful way. I know, don't you hate it when someone raises a challenge and then doesn't tell you the specific solution? Sorry, Mm, not sorry. The first type of detail comes with a little bit of a backstory. So my 12 year old loves to bake. He has been baking with me since he was in his high chair and I'd give him a little bit of whatever, whatever I was making to get his hands dirty while I was baking or cooking. He's well able to bake on his own, and he has taken to getting out my cookbooks. Yes, plural, and I'll never get rid of them. They're old friends that tell me stories of disasters, of dinner parties, great comfort foods, and really good chats with friends. But anyway, he gets down my cookbooks, and he flips through them to have a look at what he can bake, and then he'll pick out a recipe and make it. Now, he likes me in the kitchen or somewhere close if he has a question, but otherwise he does it all by himself. Okay, we're working on the self-directed cleanup. But this particular time, he was stuck on the very first line of the recipe, which he read out to me as mix with any other regular cake, which totally did not make sense to him, unsurprisingly. So I went over and I read over his shoulder, mix as any other regular cake, which makes more sense when you know that standard cake making has you combine the dry ingredients and then the wet ingredients in their own separate bowls, and then you mix the two together. But he read the directions wrong. He got stuck, he got frustrated because he just wanted to make this coffee cake, but then he couldn't get past the first line of the directions. And let's not even start on, it's called coffee cake, but there's no coffee in it. Has this ever happened to you? where you misread something or you you got stuck. It's lovingly referred to as user error, and it's more common than we think. We know what happens to us as the user, but do we ever stop to think about how our customers or our clients flounder because they've misread or misinterpreted or simply forgotten our conversation or instructions? Maybe it's triggered by something as simple as using an ambiguous direction, such as, mix as any other regular cake, or skipping steps in the instructions. And sometimes it's using terminology that your client isn't familiar with. Sometimes the fix can be as simple as following up with an email, outlining the required steps, and that email can even be in the form of a video or a voice note, which I love because that way not only are you addressing the details of what's needed, but you're doing so in a way that you can be heard and maybe even seen. Like, how personal of a touch is that? What a great way to make an impression, eh? 
not to mention there are those audible or visible learners who need to hear or see things in order to process them effectively and these people are always happy when they get their information in a way that makes sense for them which doesn't happen very often in the professional world all this to say that there are many different things that can cause user error including the user themselves having an off day in missing the details of what they're meant to do the end user your client or your customer will get frustrated and nine times out of ten their frustration will be blamed on you now you can't be in the room when they read the instructions but some things are in your control and others you can head off by using different tactics to communicate you can't make someone read the directions properly but you can give them the option of receiving the information differently. And that kind of attention to detail improves a person's experience and makes working with you a much more enjoyable one. Now, this leads me to a second and like a similar type of detail, one of how people build relationship. Your way may not be the same as mine, and that's a detail you need to be aware of when trying to create an effective communication strategy. At the heart of building relationships in a business world, it's motivation, right? Understanding yours and understanding theirs and finding a win-win position to communicate clearly and effectively. You get their buy-in, you work together, everybody wins. It seems so simple, doesn't it? And maybe it is if your audience is just like you, but maybe your entire audience isn't just like you. Maybe they don't speak your language, literally or figuratively. Maybe you're working with people who have a different background, a different education base, a different social experience than you, or they're neurodivergent and experience communications differently. These are details that impact the way your audiences will receive and interpret your information. So those details should influence the way you create and deliver what you have to tell them. Because this is your business. It's your livelihood, your paycheck, and your success in the line. So it's your responsibility to figure out how your audiences actually feel about what you do, how they like to receive their information, how they want to interact with you. And when you think about what you're offering, does it line up with what they actually want or what they think they want? That's a detail. You might know they need to hand over their bookkeeping duties to someone who has the know-how to avoid a tax penalty, but they know they just need more time to do the things that they're good at. So what's their actual motivation to buy your services versus what they think they want from you? And how do you explain it to them in a way that they understand? It's this type of detail that makes your messaging really effective, that speaks to your audience in a meaningful way and creates results for both of you. This type of detail is the difference between messaging that speaks exactly to the person you want to reach and the messaging that floats by everyone. The third and final type of detail is more macro in its detail, yet specific in application. It's the detail of what's happening in the world and the implications to your audience and the implications for you. This type of detail plays an incredibly important part of an effective strategy to be both proactive as well as reactive to events that can impact your business. You know you don't operate in a bubble. There are a multitude of audiences that you interact with and even more details that, that shift how you, your business, your ecosystem operates. And sometimes those details are tiny. And sometimes they're big. But they're all seemingly inconsequential until they're not. Let me give you some examples. If your business requires you to travel or if you have a shipping aspect to your business, then watching the details of OPEC and the fallout of the war in the Ukraine may have triggered your spidey sense to try and budget differently for your travel expenses or find more efficiencies in your delivery system or shift back to online events because you know that there's a connection between the world oil mechanisms and the price of gas and there's usually a bit of a delay in that impact making its way to you, but it impacts you nonetheless. Watching the changes in the world economy and knowing how they impact your own economy and therefore your clients or your customer's ability, even necessity to access your goods and services enables you to begin tweaking your targets and therefore your communications goals. It might mean that you shift away from a buy me now type of messaging 
and head more fully into a reputational charge, making sure that you stay in people's minds and offering assistance so that when money becomes more secure, you're top of mind when they do have budget to spend. How you pay attention to these types of details is totally up to you. But first you have to figure out which details are important for you to track. What makes a difference to your goals? What makes a difference to your client's ability to pay you? What shifts their desire to buy or work with you to a need? If you run a private care facility, then a public nurse strike might be your chance to bump up your staffing levels with qualified people. What are their pain points? Why are they striking? What do you offer as a company that resolves or eases that frustration of theirs? Because PR isn't just about getting business. It's about all of the benefits a positive reputation and relationships can bring you with all the different audiences that you serve, including current and prospective employees. But if you aren't aware of the details in the world around you, you can't plan ahead or react effectively to capitalize on the opportunity. Now, I know that lots and lots of business owners think the purpose of communications is to make more sales. They confuse advertising and marketing with public relations. Now, I know you don't do that, but some people do. Yes, sometimes the purpose is to make sales. Straight up, sell your wares, make some money, whatever your goals are. That's known as marketing communications or Marcom. But those sales are much easier to make when you've taken care of the details that matter to your business and to your end user. When you've established a reputation as someone who understands how and why your clients interact with your business, who understands how your clients or customers want to be spoken with or served, and who understands the world around them and can proactively react when changes are set in motion. These three sets of opportunities, because they really are opportunities, they've historically been heralded in the press. We live in a day and age when we have more opportunity than ever to take advantage of those expert opinions. I mean, hello, you're listening to this podcast, and it's probably not the only one you listen to. Though to be frank, I really hope you aren't using the true crime podcast as instructional. You're probably on social media. You might watch news programs or documentaries. You may even listen to the radio. You have the opportunity to take advice and apply it to your own situation. It's a matter of knowing the details that matter and trusting your sources. And sources of media literacy are a huge topic that will be in an upcoming podcast. But for now, remember that the devil is in the details and the details can be in your control. Thank you so much for listening today. If you want to know more about how to apply communication theories and tactics to your own life and business, why not get on my email list at janicefogarty.com forward slash email list, or have a look at the DIY options I have available for you to become your own expert. If you know someone who might appreciate learning more about content creation, messaging, and strategic communications, why not share this episode or the whole podcast with them? Thank you so much for your support. Until next week, my friend, have a fan freaking rest of your day.